So hopefully we divided our guys up well enough so that the next fight doesn't go horrible. We have some tanks. We saved our best archer. We'll bring our mage to keep everyone healthy. And I think... Maybe Hogan? Some armor? So right now we got a wall of a man. Moger, he's gonna go in first. He has extra break, extra movement. Gris is just a, also a brick wall, so we'll send him in. They'll weaken them up for Hakon. Hopefully Nid just crits like crazy. She's running full crit build. She's got 20% here, an extra 30 there. And then hopefully avoid strength attacks, avoid armor attacks. So without further ado, let's do this. And we'll try to get Hogan somewhere standing by the giants to give them some extra armor. A little bit outnumbered. We got a 17. Oh, 17's our biggest guy. Well, their biggest guy. Something like this. Gotta watch out for these guys hitting our archer. Screw it, change of plans. Uh, Hakon's gonna go after these two. We're just gonna clump up on either side of Hogan here. Of, uh, Hogan here. Create like a big wall and just spam him. Hopefully they all line up nicely for our lightning abilities that hit diagonally. But I think this is what we're gonna do. Try to weaken everyone e equally. So, lucky for us, the next guy that goes is only a 13. Let's see here. This big guy isn't even coming up anytime soon. So, let's do this. This guy. One armor damage, not too bad. He's gonna move up, get one extra armor from being close to this guy, and try to damage him as much as possible. I think he has. He had it. 20% chance to create item unless I removed it by accident. Okay. Let's go here, hit this guy for eight. Actually, it's a sundering impact. Sundering impact lets us apply extra damage to the guys uh, beside. Target we're attacking. So we did two damage to this guy. He's down to a ten. It'll help slow the damage I put on their side. So they can already reach our archers. So that's not good. We're gonna come in here, lend this guy a helping hand, and use bloody flail on this one. So with this big guy blocking our blocking everyone else's path, we've got a good wall set up. Uh, in terms of lightning, we can get these two, those two. Let's see who's coming up next.
really like to hit this guy. But I think we're gonna wait. We're gonna send Moku in after him. Yeah, we'll do that. So, just lightning strike this guy for the max. It'll spread to him. Four and five. Okay, what can it do? There you go, done. Send this guy over here. Start dealing with all this armor. The other move was just to move him into the middle of the fight and just hope they swarmed him. This guy's calling for backup. If you don't really mind, this fight's going pretty smoothly. Next up we have this guy, 10, he is a 12, right now we have this guy kind of out of position, nothing we can really do about that from here. Let's go here, we could move up around and attack these guys, but then we'll be arranged from this guy. This. Take him out completely. Alright. Once again, bloody flail on this guy. Hopefully, he'll get more strength. Okay, so we have a good lineup here for the lightning. It's gonna hit all three of these guys and it's not gonna spread to us. We want it to do at least three here. Three, four, five wouldn't be bad, but we'll just do max against this guy. So we'll start off with four, end up doing six to this one at the end. Since we level, leveled her up past level 5, she got Reign of Arrows. We're gonna put it right... Let's put it right here. So hopefully this enemy will eventually move straight up towards Chris instead of turning. Now the question is, do we move Chris away? This would kind of guarantee that this guy goes after one of us, because he's not in range of anyone else, so he should go after Chris. But that might lead this guy over to do something. Now we'll just go here.
it is. Stepped on it. Oh, so even her passive abilities can crit. That's interesting. We're gonna move up here. I don't know if I want to kill this guy or not. So I want to leave ro room for um, Mover to get in, because right now this guy's on the outskirts. It's a guy with 10, not too worried. Um, Fourteen into that, I'll be twelve damage. Spend two. So that next turn he can get a free kill on this guy. Kill this target and weaken this one. We have 15 willpower on this guy, so we'll just keep spending it against nothing. into the fight. We'll spend two, just get rid of this guy. Max knit out for her level. Should go up to level 10 now. Not really sure what I'm going to do with those extra stat points. So, what you did here, the old man says, his voice cracks. He suddenly smiles. Everyone that matters is alive, and there's plenty to feed them too. I can't thank you enough, but I bet the merchants will make a deal with you. That's what we did it for. The supplies, right? So, 
Ivor and Hackon find you. Both look as tired as you feel. I'm not sure how so many of us made it through that. I never expected to see Horseborn in my life, let alone fight them. And the, dead, the dredge seemed desperate. Fighting like us, you mean. Like they got nothing left to lose. I wasn't worried. With the great Ingvar on our side, how could we fail? Ivor looks at you and grumbles. Face it, Ivor, you're a legend. Oh, and what are you? See how you enjoy it when you get to Arborain. Let me know how you feel when others act like idiots just to be near you, Sunder Slayer. You won't be able to relieve yourself without it being an act of the gods. I've always considered that a rather holy moment myself. Hakon laughs. It's good to know you haven't lost your sense of humor. Well, I doubt anyone in the capital even knows what happened in Bolasgard. Juno walks up to your group unexpectedly. Word has a way of traveling faster than any of us. Don't be surprised if the capital knows we're coming. Which reminds me, we should be figuring out what we're doing next. I agree. Unfortunately, all this fighting took a serious toll on the caravan. Lundar, or what's left of it, is defensible and will allow everyone uh, some greatly needed rest. I won't argue with the Valka on that front. And I'm in no hurry to enter the old wood. I've heard strange things about that place. I'm sure it'll be fine. You watch the Valka as everyone moves on. She looks less confident than you've ever seen her before. Your hay mattress itches, but it's more comfortable than sleeping in the cold, hard ground. As you stand in your private room, you hear something. Throwing on your old, your cold bear cloak, you step outside and listen. It's the distant sound of battle, outside the gates where your ravens are. You race to the gates, shouting for the guards to open them. They look pale. I swear to the gods, I'll make it worse for you if you don't open these damn gates, you yell. The guards follow your command, and you're almost overwhelmed by a surge of clansmen pushing to get through. The old wanderer of your company finds you. Just some dredged scouts, he says. Surprised us in that snow. We took some losses, but we cleared them out. Probably a lot more coming, though. As he speaks, the snowfall lessens. Timing. The storm must be moving south now. Not, in, not that it changes much for you living it up inside the here. So you grab a raven running by you. I want every one of our fighters ready to move. Now. Set a post inside these gates for them to wait for me. The fighter nods and takes off to find everyone. Getty Ox pulling that cart. We're leaving. Good idea. Going already. The silent appearance of the two menders surprises you. You were outside the walls. What did you see? Dread scouts at. I'll ridge my axis. There's an army of them coming this way. The young mender's eyes go wide as he stares at Claw and Thang. And if that's true, they'll level this place. The storm must have hidden their approach. Or kept them at bay. But why are they here? Well, why not? I don't care. We're heading for the mountains. But the ravens could take on all the, all these dredge, especially especially with a Valka's help. Like that time in River Rake, when you helped Valka shore in. Huh, I've forgotten about that. Nickel's eyes light up. It was you, Shore, and a handful of ravens tracking down the bandit who called himself Draga of Dangler. The river, a warhorn blares across the town. The army of dredge you suspected is real. Nichols, find Goodmanure. Have his guards try to calm the people. We'll bring him to meet us at the barn with the cart. The young mender follows orders without question. Not a bad quality. The cart's not your business. I disagree. A dead Valka give you, gives you a cart to hide in the deepest recess of a river, and suddenly an army of dredge appears? If you haven't already tried, I doubt you'd be able to open the cart. If it's woven shed as I suspect, I'm the only one here who can open it. We told you, Juno's not dead. We were just traveling with it. Let me tell you something that compromises my position as Valka. The Juno who I knew, who the entire camp council knew, was put to death by us. You killed one of your own? It's a very rare sentence reserved only for the worst offenses. Altering people's minds, their thoughts, is one such offense. Folka gets quiet and looks at you. She, saw, she tried something on me. It didn't really work. Because it wasn't Juno. It couldn't be, could it? Whoever it was got mercenaries to bring that cart here for free. So. Regardless, Juno was put to death, and Ivan was in prison. In his grief, he escaped and stole away with Juno's body. But for what purpose is anyone's guess. So no, you will not be paid by the council for a job issued by a Valka whose life we ended. 
The irritation is rising when another war horn sounds. Two horns meet a large force approaches. Collect what you need and hurry to the barn. It's time we discover why you're really here. All right. The last dredge falls as you pause. Taking in heavy breaths, the snow is finally abating. The storm is moving south. Let's get inside. So we have the barn and the market. What is for sale? Supplies are super low. Plus two strength, not a bad item. Two armor talent, two armor on rest, ten divert armor attack. Two range, two break. Two break, two range, two armor. And protect from death. Let's just grab the simple strength ring and get out of here. The smell of hay and yogs dung is heavy as you enter the stout wooden barn. Zephyr and Nichols are talking in hushed tones to the guard captain, Goodmunder, who glances at a large card nervously. Everyone knows why we're here, she says. I do not believe in coincidences, but I cannot begin to imagine what would draw an army of dredge to Bindal besides the contents of this card. She moves her spear in intricate motions, occasionally shaking her head and starting over. Finally, she looks at you to open it. The sight of Bellower's body in the cart silences everyone but you. You howl as the memory of a dream tears through your mind and drops into a knee. The strange tower of white stone, lightning, fear, confusion, distrust. There is a wrongness about it all. Ball of Arcae, Floka's voice draws you from the dream, and she's shaking you by the straps of your cloak. Everyone is watching. Another dream? She asks. Your eyes finally focus on hers. A white stone tower, lightning. What are you talking about? Zephyr asks, pulling away from the cart. Her tone is full of concern. I saw a tower, lightning. I, I don't know what I saw. The Valka pauses briefly before shrugging. This is unexpected. She looks unaccustomed to surprises. Godmunder, continue your task. Nichols, take some fighter and open the mine. Keep that path clear at all costs. As both men begin to leave, she points to the cart and shouts, Not a word of this. They nod on the way out, and she turns to you and Folka. This card, I'm not sure why they are attacking, but if the dredge will recapture Bellower, he's dead, who cares if they take him? He cannot die. His immortality is more than rumor. Dredge, live, dredge lives have no natural end, but they can be killed. All except the immortal Bellower. They live forever? She nods, but is lost in thought. How do you know all this? The Valka know many things about all life in the world. I cannot go into further details right now. Further detail? That was no detail at all. There's an army of dredge coming for this cart. I'll tell you more when it's all safe. The storm to the south and dredge army to the north leaves us with one way out. The mines. Wait, our way out is to sit in a hole in the ground? Why should I trust anything you say? How would lies serve me in this moment? If the situation was not dire, why would I reveal secrets guarded by the council? She does seem more open than any Valka you or Mender you've ever met. If we go with you, what's required? We only have a couple of hours to move people and food to the mine. I'll be at the opening preparing the way. Help load carts near the gates and warn the families in the houses of our immediate departure. Without waiting for a response, Zephyr hurries away. You know, we could always take Bellower's cart and make a break into the mountains. The two of you reseal the cart. Of course, a town in chaos is tempting. It makes you wonder what we might find in the Great Hall. We stick with the Valka for now. Okay, but a couple of hours won't let us do everything. Time to pick our poison. Two of you head to the post. Raven's post. Okay. Gate, Great Hall, houses. Change. Let's check the houses. Roughly half the ravens are around to help you wind through the path between the old leaning houses. To the mines, you shout, banging on doors. Families stumble out of their homes, asking no questions of you, and head to the mines. After a few paths are cleared, 
all he whistles to get your attention. Big house over here, he says. Might be worth checking out. Look through the house for any valuables. You see anything through the windows? Or forget it. I like valuables. Odd for a house, you say, noticing the size. You bang on the ornate door as a precaution. Nothing. Entering, you find scattered toys and hand-carved brooms and wooden blocks. Slumped in a chair and snoring is a middle-aged woman. Doubt she'll mind, says Ali, walking over and prying a wineskin from her hands. Papa? Ali draws an axe as a small girl peeks around a wall. She's wiping her eyes. What is this, you ask? Ali tucks away his weapon and looks around the wall. It's like a barn for children, he says. They're all back there sleeping. They'd have missed the mines without us. The chaos at the mine entrance halts your arrival. Bulwark blood axe with a drunk woman over one shoulder and a dozen children in tow. Valka Zephyr says, And they say the gods are dead. The villagers laugh while frantic mothers scoop up their children. The celebrations end when a loud slam on the gates announces the arrival of the dredge. Everyone into the mine now, shouts Zephyr. Yeah, so we're heroes, good guys. We weren't trying to steal all of our shit. 